Hey guys, it's Austin from Halloween Lives. Today, I'm beginning a massive overhaul of my H40 timeline collection, and I'm going to film my progress as I rehaul these Trick or Treat Studios masks. My hope is to show you that with a bit of creativity and some cheap supplies off Amazon, you can have the look and feel of a prized replica for a fraction of the cost. If you're looking to rehaul your own mask, I highly recommend watching this video first and then maybe going back uh, for a second watch to go step by step. There were a few things along the way that I did that I would change up if I were to start over. And that being said, the instructions I give on these rehauls doesn't necessarily mean it's the best way to do things. I'm sure there are rehaul purists out there who would shake a finger at some of the methods I use here, uh, but unfortunately for you, you're watching me. Like I said, I've been doing this for a few years now, and it's worked out so far so good. So let's get right into it. Today we're rehauling the Halloween 2018 replica mask from Trick or Treat Studios. This thing is a direct casting from the movie mold they used on the set a few years ago, and you quite literally can't get any closer to the screen use prop than this. Now, obviously mine looks a little different than what you'd find on the website or a costume shop. Back in the day, I scooped together my ramen funds in college to pre-order this thing, um, and it's undergone a couple of rehauls uh, since that point. Now. I've taken the time to remove the hair on this mask and through the use of, you know, just absolute cancer inducing chemicals, I've been able to get down to roughly the stock paint job from back in the day. Before I start with paints, one thing you may want to ask is, do I need to strip the paint job in order to preserve the detail? Uh, recently I asked a group of online rehaulers the same thing and everybody kind of came to the conclusion of no. Um, if you want to take that extra step, certainly go ahead, uh, but it's not necessary to preserve a lot of the detail you're going to want in your final product. On to the supplies. Uh, for this rehaul, I used one bottle of white acrylic paint, one bottle of brown acrylic paint, one bottle of black acrylic paint, one bottle of moss green acrylic paint, one bottle of yellow acrylic paint, some tacky glue, three bags of doll hair, one bottle of liquid latex, a rotary tool, and some cheap paintbrushes. Now, all of the materials I just told you are available in the description below. They're all on Amazon, so just get that right in your court and have Bezos Daddy drop it off. Again, I'm starting with this thing de-haired, so if you haven't done that, my only advice is to pick at the hairline until you have enough to kind of peel off that first layer, and then go layer by layer. Uh, you might have some stubborn spots that won't come off, but don't worry about them. We'll be covering it all up later. Now, for all of the painting I do in this video, I mixed one part liquid latex with one part acrylic paint. This allows the paint to remain flexible, which is important when working on a latex mask. The first color I mixed was a dull brown. My goal here was to give the entire mask a dark layer to build dark to light from. This is what's called underpainting the latex. A lot of artists will start with a pure white and kind of work their way into the darks, but I found that this method works for me. You're gonna to wanna to give the mask a full mud bath brown latex. I mixed my paint a little too thick here so you can see me uh, scraping off the excess with my sponge brush. The next thing I did was repeat the process by adding moss green and more liquid latex to that dull brown. Depending on what look you're going for, this may or may not be necessary, but one distinguishing factor of the 2018 mask for me is that green brown tint that the whole thing has. It's almost a moldy look, but nowhere near how serious it gets in Halloween ends. So I just layer the whole mask in this color as well to give the whole thing sort of a base of brownish green. By the end, you should have this very neutral dark color on the mask, and once it dries, we're ready for white. Now, naturally, white acrylic paint comes a little opaque. If you're like me and you paint on canvas, you'll know that uh, when you're using white on a darker color, you kind of have to go over it with layers and layers to uh, really get that true white. But for this mask, that's gonna work to our advantage. Liquid latex dries clear, and the white mixed in won't be a full opacity stark white. So what that's gonna do is leave that underpainting layer below to give the white a great tint. I went in with a smaller brush here to try and only hit the highlights. This mask is obviously covered in these thin, tiny cracks, so I did my best to avoid them and leave that underpainted color underneath. The idea here is to keep your brush from really getting into any of those grooves, so I went in with this fan motion to hit the raised areas. I did this process over the entire mask, going much lighter on the neck and especially the back of the neck to allow more of that under layer uh, through, like in the movie. You'll end up with a nice cream color with a tint of brown and green for your base, which is exactly what I was looking for. Unfortunately, my fan method had covered up a little bit more of the cracks than I would have liked, so I went in with a very fine brush and filled them in with the uh, underpainting layer we had made earlier. Don't get worried if these uh, you know, overpainted cracks are a little bit too bold or too dark just yet. 
We're going to be blending this all together shortly. I also went in at this step and mixed yellow, brown, and green with liquid latex to make a more obvious molding to the hairline areas, nose, and mouth. Now, all together, things were looking pretty solid thus far, and that 2018 look was starting to show up. One thing that wasn't quite lining up for me, though, was, was the eyes. There were a few masks used in production for Halloween 2018 and all with slightly different eye cuts. I knew I wanted the eye on our right to have that angular look visible from the film and, and some of the shots of the screen used mask. For some reason, that little detail just screams H18 to me. So I went in with my Dremel tool and carefully carved out that shape. The main piece for me there was getting that valley on the lower lid correct, then angling off the right side curve of the upper lid. I also took this time to give the other eye cut a makeover as well and give it that droopier look we see in the film. I also think since this process sort of thins out the rounded eye holes that you get a much more film accurate thin pull look. Now next, I knew some of the final shading and weathering would require the hair to be in place. So I began the process of mapping out the layers of hair I need to give Mikey the luscious locks he deserves. I'd say starting just below the ear line, draw a line every inch and a half up or so to make sure the final product has depth of hair. Don't be afraid if you need to redraw lines, we'll be covering it up later. You can even add your own artistic signature. With your guidelines in place, it's time to add the hair. This part sucked a lot of ass, but it was definitely worth it. Now, Trick or Treat Studios masks come with decent hair, but to get that on-screen look, I definitely recommend the doll hair method. Plus, with my leftovers, I can finally pay back everybody I tricked in elementary school by offering doll hairs instead of dollars. Give me the two dollars. <laughs> I said doll hairs, psych. Fine, give me the doll hairs. To start hairing the mask, I pulled out a clump of the doll hair and tried to straighten it out with the best of my ability. Then I made a clean cut on the top to give a thick line for the eventual liquid latex to adhere to. I put a small amount of liquid latex in a cup and laid a layer down that was roughly the width of my hair clump. From there, I tried to gingerly lay down the hair with the cut side against the latex to hold it in place. Keep in mind this shit will stick to your hands and be mad frustrating to lay down if you're impatient and an idiot like me. Once my hands were already disgusting, I said fuck it and went in with more liquid latex on my fingertip to go over top and make a hair sandwich with latex bread to really hold the hair together and keep it on the mask. This messy process is great for ensuring the bulk of the hair lays right on the mask. You'll see here that clearly I have some excess hair due to the length of the clump, but we'll give him a trim up later. Unless you're going for a Joe Dirt Myers, which, you know, by all means. You're going to want to repeat this process up the back of the head until you get close to that final hairline. I originally only ordered one bag of hair, so when I waited for the Bezos delivery of more, I went in with some scissors and carefully clipped off some of the excess. An important thing to note here is to brush through the hair after each layer dries. You're going to have a lot of loose hair that comes out each time, but don't worry. That's what the layers are for, and you'll be thanking yourself later when you're holding the mask and it doesn't shed like a German Shepherd. As I got closer to the hairline, I didn't want strays coming over the desired area, so I started using the tacky glue as an adhesion method. I don't think this is quite as strong as the liquid latex, but it's definitely a lot less messy and allows for a bit more precision towards the end. I also used the plastic side of a paintbrush to really push down the hair into the glue, as I wasn't going over top with the sandwich method anymore. At this point, you should sort of have a mic with a receding hairline, something that looks just about perfect but just needs a tad more hair. I didn't take video of me laying down that final layer of hair because I'm a nervous wreck because of this messy ass process. But the keys for the final layer are to really make your cuts from the clump precise and to again utilize that paintbrush handle to enforce the bond. Don't worry if your hairline isn't as crisp as 2016 Drake, you want a bit of variation to give it that natural look. With that complete, you're almost done with the 2018 rehaul. I looked at mine and was pretty proud, but I knew that something was missing. Some of that grunginess that the screen used prop had. So I took the round sponge from the paint set and clipped off the edges to give the sponge a rough texture. I mixed together the moss green, brown, and yellow to create a nice dull olive color and began creating some of the final layers of weathering. At this stage, I mainly focused on the hairline and neck areas. In the film, these are some of the most discolored areas, giving it sort of a molded grease look. I made sure this first layer wasn't too dark so it could blend in with our previous work. This layer also helps blend that hair right into the mask, fading from dark to light. After that was done, I added some black to the paint mixture and went in with smaller brush to really darken up these areas. 
I really like how the fade from dark to light builds up here, and that's all working in layers. I darken up the hairline with this thinner brush and blended it into the earlier color. I also really, really went crazy on the neck to make it as nasty as possible. Now, using that sponge and a very, very small amount of that paint mixture, I also touched up the nose, mouth, and eyes of the mask to give it that extra layer of grunge that the real prop had. And from there, I took a look at the mask, and I called it good. Just kidding. I wanted to call it good, but something was missing. The hair on the 2018 looks a lot of different ways, but I really love the look and color in this image, so I used the sponge again with a mixture of black and white acrylic paint to create a charcoal gray and dry brush the hair all over. You'll see how I ended up taking off some of the final hair sheddings in the process too, so this is kind of a two-in-one step. This part isn't, you know, necessary to the mask, but I knew I wasn't going to be able to look at this gnarly latex with beautiful brown hair attached to it for very long. It's a really easy step, and you'll see here in a second how much it improves that final look. And, and here it is, my Halloween 2018 Trick or Treat Studios rehaul. I'm super proud of it, and all in all, it only took a couple weeks to go from base to this. My goal with these Trilogy masks is to make them as uniform as possible, so I'm going to be using a lot of the same methods I used on this one uh, for my next mask on the agenda, which is the Halloween Kills mask. If, if you like this tutorial, stay tuned for that one, because that shit's going to get crispy. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a couple of to-dos and maybe some not-to-dos along the way. If you like Michael Myers content, and I suspect you do, my brother and I host a weekly podcast all about Michael Myers called Halloween Lives. We've had guests from the movies, fan films, and the community on the show, and we're still just getting started. So if you like the sound of that, or if you just want to see me struggle with another latex mask, please consider subscribing. I know you hear it every day, but we're a really small channel, and this helps out so much. Until next time, though, my name is Austin Duncan from Halloween Lives, the podcast of Michael Myers. Thanks for watching.